Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Today we would like to present you a case of acute traumatic arthritis. And uh, don't be surprised, the patient is Dr. Terry Tim. He had an accident, a sport accident, last week. And what did happen, Terry? <coughs> I was playing paddle ball and received a sharp blow almost on, uh, on the chin, almost dead center, but a little bit to the right. Uh, the person was swinging in such a way that uh, he hit on the right side and actually uh, hard enough to knock me right to the floor. And it, at the time, I... Uh, uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if something had broken. The, injury, the blow was that hard. And you had pain in the jaw? <clears throat> uh, shortly after the accident, I felt like I had uh, soreness in both joints. Uh, more pain uh, immediately after the accident on the right side. Mm -hmm. right side. And did you feel that the uh, teeth uh, came together as before, or did you feel any any change in your bite? No, the bite felt the same, but there was soreness in the joint on closing. How was the jaw opening? Uh, Did you feel a restriction? It seemed to deviate differently from, uh, or with restriction than before. So it deviated before? Yes. So you had a deviation no. <laughs> in your jaw opening? or uh, Afterwards. Afterwards, Afterwards, before you didn't notice, didn't notice you never looked in, in the mirror to <laughs> check whether the right. jaw functions right. Uh, did you have, uh, um, shall I say, occlusal adjustment before done? We had started a occlusal adjustment procedure. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, what was the symptoms? The symptoms were uh, mainly sensitivity in the teeth. Uh, with some TMJ problem, uh, nothing acute. Uh, that was uh, also the result of a paddle ball injury. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> paddle ball is a dangerous sport. I conclude from this. Now, <clears throat> uh, you said you had a restriction of the jaw opening, but more you noticed that you have a devi had a deviation. To which side did your jaw deviate? To the left side. To the left side. Can you demonstrate, fake it? Yeah, that's about what I saw when uh, Tim came to me. The next uh, thing what I did was uh, palpate the area over both joints to see whether the condyles moved with the opening movement. And they did, the right more than the left because of the deviation he had. I was wondering whether the condyle one or the other or both uh, were broken so i told him to open a little bit and then i pressed hard and this gave you a pain where it gave a sharp pain on the left on joint. the left but when you came in right then you complained about more pain in the right joint and effectively the right felt a little bit swollen Whereas on the left, I, I couldn't feel anything different. From here down, I went uh, along the border of the mandible to see if there is any fracture. You can feel a little step if there is one, but we didn't feel anything. And also the pressure did uh, elicit only pain in the left joint and nowhere around the ramus. Now, if there is a fracture of the condyle, the condyle will be pulled inward and downward through the force of the lateral pterygoid. And this makes that the ascending ramus becomes a little bit shorter. And the effect would be that the teeth on the side where the fracture is, or if you have a fracture on both sides, the posterior teeth came closer together and uh, the result is an anterior open bite.
but uh, Tim said this was okay and he felt uh, the occlusal uh, situation as before. For fractures, uh, locations of predilections are the neck of the condyle on both sides, the area around the wisdom tooth, and here on both sides in the area of the canine. So there you would look first if any things broken or not. Now how was the pain on the right side? Can you describe it as a dull pain or as a stabbing pain or at the time of the injury? At the time of the injury or when you came to me? Uh, it was uh, more of a soreness and not a sharp pain. And did you feel a pain on the left side? Uh, the pain that the, the left joint was sore all the time, but on sharp deviations laterally, especially moving the uh, mandible to the right to side. To the right side. Would elicit a sharp pain in and the left Was joint. this the same on the right? No, there was it no. It doesn't uh, react on, on movement. It was a constant pain, but not specially increased uh, during movement. On the right side. On the right side. On the left, the pain was increased when you moved your mandible around. Yes, and that evening, uh, when eating, uh, mm -hmm. any substance between the teeth that had to, where pressure had to be applied to chew through it, I listed the pain, but again, mainly on the left side. On the left side, in function. Yes. Less on the right and more on the left. Now, uh, we can't see the bruise here anymore, that's uh, over. But if you get the, uh, the blow from here, then you would expect more reaction on this side because the, the whole force is transported to the left joint area. And what could be most likely would be a counteraction of the lateral pterygoid on the left side. So. We didn't know whether there was a fracture or only a fissure. Here around, we expected uh, some more to see on the left side than on the right, even though the right joint hurted at the moment a little bit more, but not in function or in uh, palpation. So we did uh, TM joint x-rays to see if this would be OK or not. We took first two x-rays of each side in a technique that can be used in the everyday practice and needs no special equipment at all. It's to say these x-rays had a little gadget involved, but that doesn't play any uh, role in here. This is the right joint. First we have here the ear canal, the meatus acousticus externus. Then here you see the fossa, that's the articular eminence, and here is the condyle. It's real sharp designed, the outline is without any disturbance. Here you have two lines that is produced to the little concave surface in the neck of the condyle here where the lateral pterygoid inserts, but nothing special. Then here you have the open situation. Again, ear canal, that's the fossa empty now. The eminencia here and the condyle came forward and downward in this area. On the left side, again for orientation, the ear canal, then here the fossa, the eminencia, and here the condyle. The condyle here has not the sharp outline as we had on the right side. We have some lines projected in it or in the condyle itself, which makes us uh, suspicious, this one here, and then this little piece here. If you go to the open situation, you notice, however, that this line stays in place, whereas the condyle moves out of the fossa. But the little thing here, that moves with the condyle. It's now down here. So it could be that 
here some sprain had taken place during the blow to the chin of Terry Tim. If we compare the right and the left condyle, then we see it clearly. The right has a sharp design all round, whereas the left has a sharp design till here about, then it becomes a little bit fuzzy, and even more we have a piece that is or seems to be separated from the structure of the condyle. So this indicates that we need more information, that this information is not enough for us. There are other projections which we will show, uh, show now. We get a good survey from a Panorex, but for this x-ray you need a special uh, machinery, special technique, so it's not for use in the everyday practice. Uh, we have the right condyle here, nice outline, not so clear as in the technique we showed before. But then here you can control whether there is any fracture around here, and you see nice continuity of this line. Also up here, nice continuity, no interruption of the line. And now you can follow all here around. And we said before, here is a place of predilection for a fracture nothing to see. Then we come across here. Here again is a, a position where the mandible might be fractured and on the other side in the area of the canine with its long root here is a weak position for the mandible and then we come up here again no fractures to see and here the left condyle but here again, we have something we haven't seen on the right side, so we remain suspicious about the right side, and we might take a special x-ray that shows this area very clear. Uh, this is a contact picture where the x-ray machine actually contacts the skin of the patient. It was uh, described first by Parma and shows the condyle more or less free from projections. And again, the right side has a nice sharp outline, whereas the left side here is sharp designed. And then we come in this area here. And if we make now, we have to close up. You see that there are two separate lines. And behind them, we have more translucence. Uh, it, uh, in the x-ray, it's darker. So this is something that is wrong in this area. I said before in the Panorex that uh, we are suspicious about the right side because the Panorex shows the whole thing upside down. You see the patient's right side on the left and so forth. And these pictures again are situated as you look at the patient's right side to your left and left side to your right. The orientation of the condyle whatso uh, whatsoever is the same in all uh, three views we had. So this is the condyle uh, which doesn't uh, leave us with much good feelings. So let's go back to the patient. Terry now must uh, feel very bad after he has seen that uh, three different uh, projections show that his left joint has uh, some reminders of this little blow, or it was a big blow, I <laughs> say so it was not so little, otherwise he wouldn't have passed out. This left joint uh, shows sprain and probably it's due to the traction of the lateral pterygoid in the area in the neck of the condyle right here, and that's what hurt at you. Now, a week later, how do you feel? <clears throat> Only rarely uh, when I apply a, a, a lot of force in the joint, either biting through something hard or moving it sharply to the right does it uh, elicit the same pain that I had before. Uh, the soreness is slowly leaving. It doesn't feel so sore at any time. Mm -hmm. How is the right uh, joint today? Today it feels fine. Feels fine. Now, the, the expectations about this case are that uh, he will 
lose the pain on both sides. A little bit slower on the left side, but there is not too much damage done. I could imagine that with a proper occlusion, and you have some prematurities, the healing process would be much faster. What we often see in acute traumatic arthritis is that the pain is triggered by the accident, blow in the face in a car accident, and then persists for a long time and you find in most cases some prematurities. Most people have some prematurities. And a prematurity in the occlusion is a predisposing factor for pain triggered by whatever could trigger it, an accident or psychic emotional stress or other situations the patient can encounter. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.